of me, Rahmita, Tias, Anissa Ar Arwin, and Valency will present about political speech. Uh, the first one will be presented by Anissa Arwin. All right, thank you for the opportunity. So, wait. So the first journal that I found is discourse analysis of the political speech of Prime Minister Imran Khan during the Belt and Road Forum using holiday and fair club framework. So this is written by Samar Ali, Muhammad Ajmal, and Farah Fayyad. And the source of this article is from International Journal of Advanced Science and Technology. So before we go deeper, let me explain a brief information about who is Imran Khan. So Imran Khan is the 22nd and the current Prime Minister of Pakistan. He is generally described as a nationalist and a populist. So Imran Khan is proclaimed political platform and declaration including Islamic values. Next, uh, the stat the focus of the study is political speech delivered by the Prime Minister Imran Khan at the event of the Belt and Road Forum. So the Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation is an international political and economical forum. And this event took place in Beijing. Prime Minister Imran Khan as a key, key ally of China was welcomed by President Xi Jinping upon his arrival. Next, the research objective and the research questions are ex explicitly shown in the article. Here is the here is the study objective. The first one is to discover how language works to reproduce social and power in relationship in society, investigate the political discourse of Imran Khan as a social practice, and to find out the ideology through different techniques of CTA. Here is the research question. The first one is how to the different strategies of fair cloud model present the relationship of power and social interactions. The second one is how does the language affect the power of justice in a nation? And then the last but not least is which type of ideology is used in political discourse of Imran Khan. Next, here is the subject of course, Prime Minister Imran Khan's political speech. And the data collection technique used is uh, obtain the script from wspensifo.com and that the data analysis use a qualitative approach and investigate the context of CDA using fair cloud model modular. So the hypothetical work of Norman Fairclough can be viewed as suitable on the ground that it gives huge space to dissenting jargon, syntactic highlights, and talk practice of Imran, Kar, Imran Khan discourse. So it analyzed text through three dimensions. The first one is the text analysis, and the second one is process analysis, and the last but not least is social analysis. So here we can take a look at the table one of the repeated words and phrases used by E.M. Imran Khan. Then the, the data will be analyzed in three phases that I already mentioned. Here is the first one, text analysis. So as we all know, vocabulary plays important role and carry particular meanings and ideologies. Vocabulary choices not only to show speaker attitude or state of mind, but also produce, control, maintain, 
maintain the relationship between speaker and the audience. So I will try to explain the table to you, but uh, I will give a little disclaimer that I will not provide the script because it is not provided in the journal. So the first one is material process. Material process is a process of doing. There are usually two participants in this process, namely actor and goal. Imran Khan used this material process in address to demonstrate the situation of Pakistan and China in the different spree of life and also arouse the confidence of China and its leadership for their support for Pakistan. The second one is relational process, which is a process of being. Here Imran Khan used this relational process to, with the aim to make the deep root friendship, partnership, and brotherhood with China. And then the next mental process is the process of feeling, thinking, and seeing, where Imran Khan realized that the forum, the felt, and the road forum will take a concrete shape. And then purple process is the process of saying where Iman, Imran Khan clearly talk about China and Pakistan economic and socio-economic issues. Next, um, pardon, the table provided from the journal is a bit messy here. So there are two types of modality. The first one is relational to show level of authority and then the second is expressive to deal with the truth. The modal verb are used to imply that the speaker is somehow in a position to give such comments such as, uh, for example, Imran Khan say, I must say, so must here is to indicate comment. Um, and that the next, the use pronoun we, here indicates the domin dominance, including the audience and the people of the country. Uh, people of Pakistan trust him, trust Imran Khan and he trusts people of Pakistan. So we here shows the inclusive tendency of intimacy and the use of I, the pronoun I here shows how he was very confident with his personal abilities and the support from Pakistan's people. And then the last but not this is the use of you here, Imran Khan wants to involve audience physically and mentally in social power relationship. The second finding is processing analysis. So in the pro processing analysis, we can conclude that Imran Khan used simple and complex sentence that indicate the seriousness of the occasion. Um, and then the last but not least is the social analysis. For the social analysis, we can conclude that Imran, that Imran Khan's speech carries two purposes. The first one is to show gratitude toward the president of China. And the second one is to take into account the China and Pakistan economic corridor. Okay, so my personal comments for this first journal is that the findings and discussion are well described. However, there are some uh, errors in the use of capital letters at the beginning of the sentence and also some grammatical error. Next, we move on to the second journal that I found entitled What Lies Underneath a Political Speech, discourse, Critical Discourse Analysis of Five Prime Minister's Political Speech 
I are uh, on the tele TV program Returning Happiness to the People. Um, I found this from the Creator Open in the section of Open Linguistics. So before we go deeper, let me explain brief information about Thai Prim Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha. So Prayut Chan Ocha is a retired Royal Army, Royal Thai Army General Officer, serving as Prime Minister of Thailand since 2014 and Minister of Defense since 2019. So General Prayut is a royalist or known as a loyal support loyal supporter of the Thai royal family. Okay, so the focus of the study is the political speech of the Thai Prime Minister General Prayut Chan Ocha in the pro TV program Returning Happiness to the People. Returning Happiness to the People is like a Thailand TV program, like some kind of propaganda run by the government. And then the research objectives are, is to critical, the critical investigation of political speech is limited to investigate, investigating the political speech script using low inference approaches such as corpus-based studies to uncover the, any comfort information to shed light on linguistic features that characterize the addresser, the addressee, the information conveyed in the political speech script and also the function of language employed by the addresser for imparting message. So here is the subject of course the political speech of the Thai Prime Minister Ren Pai Chan Ocha and then the data collection the data taken from the speeches of General Prayut in the TV program from 30 May 2014 to 30 May 2015. And the English translations are provided by the official Royal Thai government website. And the data analysis is using a qualitative and quantitative source. This is a mixed method and employs Van Dyke concept of political discourse analysis. Uh, let's move on to the table three. The table three shows top 50 keywords are dominated by keywords relating to the information conveyed by the Thai Prime Minister. So from these keywords, we find that Thailand has various problems such as corruption, trafficking, uh, tourism issues, something like that, so that the country need to reform and cooperate with other countries. With this message, General Prayut is able to justify his government's current policies. Um, the next finding, table 4, shows 15 keywords relating language protection from the top 50 keywords before. From this table, we know that PM Prayut was very interested in conveying information rather than interactively communicating with the audience. And then the next, uh, the researcher also take a look at the differences between PM Prayut and also Mr. Obama's speech. So as we can see, uh, the top keywords of Obama here is our. In contrast with Obama, uh, Prayut's top keywords are Thailand, government, must, and will. Uh, General Prayut's common use of deontic, deontic modality indicates a general strengthening of his commitment to the truth of his message contains in with the models. 
Next, here is the most frequent Thai keywords and their English translation. So, um, from this finding, we can conclude that the PM speeches reveal that the position that he positioned himself as uh, some kind of boss who takes the authority to control what is right and what is wrong and what to, con what to include in the agenda that and what is not. So, yeah, uh, my comments about this article is that the findings and discussion are very well described, same as the first journal, and then the negativity of this journal is that the research objective and questions are not stated explicitly like the first one. Next, we move on to the third journal that I found, entitled Political Discourse of Trust. Stain staking acts in the Thai PM's weekly TV, TV addresses. Uh, written by Mela Dajit Apa from Tamasat University, and the source is Advanced in, in Language and Literary Studies Journal. So, this one has the same subject as my second journal, which is Thai PM Gen. General Prayut Chan Ocha's weekly addresses broadcast across Thai national television um, from March 2000 and 2017 and December 2017. Um, the objective is to examine the Thai PM's use of specific stance act markers in manifesting his personal quality of trustworthiness. The research questions are explicitly shown in the journal. The first one is what Thai stains markers were used by the Thai PM as the military leader to mediate his personal quality of trustworthiness. The second one is how those particular stains marker were used across stains construction types and the last but not least is what plausible interpretation underlying the use of specific type of stains markers and the construction were in relation to the construct of trust. Um, still the same as my second journal, the data is taken also from the same TV show, the government TV show, and then the English translation also provided by the real Thai government website. And the data analysis also the same uh, mixed method, qualitative and quantitative, and relied on FERCLA CDA framework. Here is the finding. The finding here is the overall frequency of stains marker with integrity as the top use. Let's take a look at. The first one, stains mark markers and construction projecting benevolence. So here we can see that the top frequency here is hen or hen means C. Uh, for example, home hen, I have seen um, here the utterances of the PM's good intention with the verb hen or C are used to highlight the PM's shared knowledge or knowledge of Thailand's situation, proving that he is a leader who is very attentive to the Thai people's well-being. And then the second one, we have Kao uh, Chai. Kao Chai means understand. So the example of the sentence here is Pom Kao Chai means I understand your hardship. Uh, so here he represents himself as a devoted politician attempting to resolve conflicts and social issues while other people may oppose him. 
next we have stains marker and construction projecting integrity so the top frequent use Thai words is ko means would like so here is the example of the sentence Hom ko uh, means I would like I would like to support all of our children to keep their promise, promise, promises made to their mother. So the Thai PM expressed his personal morality by giving priority to show gratitude and doing good deeds to mother. He asserted that gratitude towards parents is the key to national development. And then the second one is from Jack High means that I would like I would like to you to trust this government. So here the PM asking people to trust the government. The last but not least is stance marker and construction projecting competency. The top frequent use here is guy means be able to or it can be mean as from die i have ordered so here the analysis suggests that thai pm attempt to emphasize his goals and objectives to solve conflicts and social issues the next one is from cha or i will i will do immediately whatever is possible so here the result of stage art analysis demonstrate that the PM discursively constructed all three aspects of trust via his weekly addresses as a form of hegemony, revealing his values, norm, ideology, and manipulation from the speeches. So that was, I think that was all of my three journals that I found. Uh, I, at first, I want to like show three journals with the same su subjects, which is um, Thai PM, but I just found two. So I use Imran Khan as the other one. So the second and both have the same subject, which is Thai PM speeches on returning people to happiness but uh, they are having different in the analysis so uh, that the second journal use Van Dyke FPDA and that the third journal that I found is use Fairclough CDA frameworks that's the difference I think that's all. Back to analysis in Donald Trump presidential campaign to win American's heart. And you can see that the researchers is Andita Rahman, Sophie Unianti, and Dujani Ratnadewi. And these journals is published in 2017. Next. Uh, the focus of the study is Donald Trump presidential campaign to win Americans' heart. And the next is the study objectives. There are four objectives, which are the first is to investigate the utterances that illustrated political discourse in Donald Trump's speech. The second is to investigate the way he delivered his political discourse. The third is to investigate the aim of the utterances. And the last is to investigate the effect of the utterance to people. Next is... Uh, the research question, there are also, also four research questions. The first is what are the utterances that illustrated political discourse in Donald Trump's speech? The second is how does Trump deliver his political discourse? 
the third is what is the aim of the utterances and the last is what is the effect of the utterance to people and for the subject is donald trump's presidential campaign and for the data collection techniques the researchers use qualitative approaches and for the data analysis technique uh, the data was analyzed by using vantage thematic theory which described the themes and the detail with use of sticker background based on theoretical lens to find out the ideology that is underlying behind the text uh, the next i will talk about the findings uh, the research the researchers are focuses on some topics from from utterances in his speech the first is central issues which has subtopics which is making america great again and for the making america great again the researchers uh, found that trump uses his idea to gain power to make america become superpower so that they can control many aspects in the world and uh, in his speech Trump uses the data from the World Economic Ranking that put America out of biggest ten, which becomes strong reason for Trump to deliver his utterance. And the second top topic is public interest, which has some subtopics. The first is radical Islam terrorism. Uh, from his speech, Trump plans to control mu mu Muslim by banning them to enter U.S. And the second subtopic is American border, which uh, from his uh, speech, he also wants to control the immigrant outflow by limiting presence of immigrants. He show his concern that American people must have controlled their own country. And the next topic is Uh, persuading the audience political view uh, you can go to the next slides Anissa there are one subtopic which is soft power and from his uh, speech Trump used one of the forms that called soft power and used it by showing his displeasure to the government in order to lead public opinion that the government policy is wrong. Uh, the His speech is, so what happened? And you know when I see and watch a little while ago when five people are released from Kitmo, think of it. You know they all go back to fight. And the, the fourth finding is affecting people's perception of themselves, which has one subtopic, which is fun funding campaign. From his speech, which, uh, by the way, I don't think this shit gonna happen, but you know, I'm self-funding my campaign. From that utterances, the researchers found that Trump also affects people's perception when he shows that he is willing to sacrifice his wealth in campaign race as a part of his state activities. And the researchers also found that Trump used various strategies in gaining power and the way he delivers his ideology, which, the, which is the part of his desire to become U.S. president. And to fulfill the rhetoric way and the way Trump delivered his idea, he used ethos, pathos, and logos. Next is my own comments. Uh, for the uh, positive comments, I think that the content of the journal is quite complete and the findings and discussion are being described well. However, uh, the data collection technique didn't be described in the journal and the objectives of the study are presented implicitly. The next journal which I found is entitled Donald Trump's Ideology in His Political Speeches, a Critical Discourse Analysis. You can see that there are also three 
a researchers with who who are Siti Haryani, Ari Purnama, and Hartono. And these journals are this journal is published in 2019. Next, the focus of the study is Donald Trump's ideology in his political speeches. And the next is study objectives. There are two objectives in this journal, which are to investigate an ideological coloration in Donald Trump's political speech and to show the impact of Donald Trump. The research question is how is the ideology represented in Donald Trump's political speech and what is the impact of Donald Trump's speech on society. Uh, the subjects for this journal is Donald Trump's ideology and the data collection techniques. The, the researchers use qualitative approaches and using several step, steps which are searching for the video and downloading the video. And for the data analysis techniques, the researchers use some steps according to CTA by Van Dijk theory. And next for the findings, uh, for these journals, uh, the researchers also focuses on one topic, but uh, they, they uh, analyze into detail such as uh, in anti-Muslim there are thematics, schemata, semantic, syntax, stylistic, and rhetoric. For thematic, the theme is based on the conflict between Israel and Palestinians. As you can see in his uh, speech and for schemata, from his speech, the uh, Donald Trump applied positive self-representation and he represent this action is the best interest of the United States and pursuit between Israel and, and Palestinians. And for semantic, there are also four subtopics, which is the first is setting. Uh, the setting used in the Donald Trump speech is you want to show that the previous president of America was made a failure by, by campaign for money. And for detail, uh, he recognizing Jerusalem as the capital city of Israel is the interest of United States of America. And for meaning from his speech, the researchers found that Trump to the action without an approval of both parties. And for pre-assumption, the presupposition is an attempt to support the opinion by giving the premise that is trusted. And for the syntax, there are two subtopics. The first is sentence form. And in his speech, uh, there are close form found on the United States would support a two-state solution if agreed by both sides. And the clause is uh, con concluded as presupposition. And for pronoun, uh, in his speech, we cannot solve our problems by making the same failed assumptions. Uh, the speech explained that the word we is a pronoun for Trump and society of America. Next is for stylistic. In stylistic, there is a one subtopic which is lexicon, and the choice of word used is not merely a coincidence, but ideologically show how someone's meaning toward facts or reality. And from the from his speech, the lexicon is found in it is time for the many who desire peace to expel the extremists from their midst. The extremists uh, ideologically show how someone's meaning toward fact or reality. And the last is rhetoric. 
which has one subtopic, which is graphic uh, from his speech. While previous presidents have made this a major campaign promise, they failed to deliver. And from that utterances, the researchers found that Trump assumed that the previous presidents make the failure and his action is right. The next is uh, my own comment for the positive comment for the journals is the content of the journal is complete and the findings and discussion are being described well and from the introduction until conclusion are being presented completely and for the negative comments is the researchers only focuses on anti-muslim topic and the third journal which I found is entitled Representation of Gender Through Framing, a Critical Discourse Analysis on Hillary Clinton's Selected Speeches. As you can see that there are two researchers with, which are Safina Kalwal and Maria Isabel Maldonado Garcia. And this, uh, this journal is published in 2019. The next is the focus of the study is representation of gender through framing. And for the next is objectives. There are two objectives, which is application of very close three dimensional model for analyzing the projection of Hillary Clinton's gender identity through her discourse and to investigate the role of frames for the projection of gender identity in Hillary Clinton's speeches. The next is research question. There are also two research questions. The first is what are the different frames used by Hillary Clinton in her political discourse? And the second is how is framing used for gender representation in Hillary Clinton's speeches? The next is the subject is Hillary Clinton's selected speeches and data collective techniques use qualitative research and the tool applied for the study is frame problem tool by James Paul G. And for the data analysis technique, the analysis is grounded in Norman Virgo assumptions in critical discourse analysis. And the next is the findings. Uh, for the findings, the researchers uh, focuses on two topics. The first is fight frame. Uh, in her speech, if you'll give me the change, I'll wait and win four fights for you. And uh, from the speeches, Hillary Clinton uses the word fight for her political agendas, and uh, that builds fight frame for Hillary and project her as a fighter and brave lady. And the second is family frame. In his speech, he said that now the second fight is to strengthen America's families because when our families are strong, America is strong. And she make it clear to her audience that for her, America can only be strong when all the American families will be strong. And for her, uh, she projects her gender identity as a loving mother for whom all the members of her family are equal importance. And the next is my personal comment for the journals. Uh, I found that the content of the journal is quite complete and the findings and discussion are being described well. And other point from introduction until conclusion also being presented completely. However, the data collection technique didn't be described in the journal. And I found some differences between the three journals which I presented. Uh, the first one is the first and third journal have some subtopics in the discussion, but the second journal only focuses on one topic, which is anti-Muslim. And 
the second differences which I found is the first and the second journal use quantity theory while the third journal use spherical theories and the last is in the point of conclusion the first journal gives su suggestion but the second and third journal didn't give suggestion i think that's all for me the next will be presented by Rias. Uh, the first journal that i found uh, the title is a critical discourse analysis of indonesia presidential election in 2014 giving speeches in campaign debate um the researchers are ikhwan prasada and jufri sahrudin The focus of the study from this journal is to explore the relationships among language, ideology, and power. And the objective is uh, the the objective of this research is investigating how the candidates of each political party try to justify their ideas and persuade their audiences by utilizing subtle ethological discourse structure in their speech. Um, the subject of this research is the candidates of <coughs> presidential election in 2014 and data collection technique is qualitative approach and the data analysis technique is descriptive method. The findings from this journal is There are five types of discursive strategies that used by each candidate in political campaign debate in 2014. The types are positive self-presentation, other negative presentation, lexicalization, evidentiality, consensus, and number game. The second point is the types of get to a previous slide. The second point is the types of discursive strategies that dominantly used by Jokowi Jodo's political debate campaign in 2014. It can be concluded that um, positive self-presentation, other negative presentation, consensus, classicalization, evidentiality, and number king. And the third point is the types of discursive strategies that dominantly used by Prabowo Subianto's political debate campaign in 2014. It can be concluded that um, his positive self-presentation, consensus, lexicalization, evidentiality, and other negative presentation. And the fourth point is some of the strategies used by the candidates to get great attention and change the way of public thinking and point of view about the the candidate too in the five years of his administration the types of discursive strategies can be discussed in political campaign as an object of the study to observe political campaign activity to show a specific language with a clear and focused goal it is namely persuasion utterances which are produced by speakers do, does not only function as explanation of speaker mind or ideology towards the listener, but it is also change people's perspective and to what the speaker wants to do. Next, next. The second journal is, as it told, critical discourse analysis of the political speech of the Egyptian president, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, at, at the new Suez Canal inauguration ceremony. This journal is researched by Inas Hussein. This journal is in 2016. Next, the focus of the study from this journal is to, to explore the silent linguistic features of the speech and the main activities and strategies used to achieve his long standing political goals. The objective of this research is 
to explore the intended ideologies and the critical linguistic aspects in the political speech delivered by Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi at the New Suez Canal inauguration ceremony on 6 August 2015. The research question from this study is the first, what are the key intended ideologies enhanced and involved in LCC speech? And the second one is what are the distinctive linguistic features and strategies adopted by the speaker to convince his audience to believe in his ideas? The subject from this research is President of Egyptian. The data collection technique is qualitative approach and the data analysis technique is the analysis of the obtained data was conducted by drawing upon fair class three-dimensional model of CTA, namely the language text, whether spoken or written, discourse, discourse practice, and sociocultural practices. The findings from this journal is the result of the first part of our of this analysis has shown that the key ideology, ideological components of the speech can be summarized into the following core concepts. The first one is thanking all those who contributed to the completion of this project. And the second one is declaring strength and confrontation. And the third one is expressing self-confidence. Next. And the second and the findings of the second question is that the speaker resorts to intertextuality and the the use the use of religious expressions and that different linguistic techniques are used by the president to deliver his messages and get this audience belief in them. Among these are figures of speech repetition, synonymy, and collocation. The result of the keyword analysis have shown that the most prominent Words employed by LCCs are achieved, exceptions, canal, achievement, thanking, and terrorism. And the third journal that I found is entitled Analysis on Political Speech of Susa Pabagi Doyono, Common Sense, Assumption, and Ideology. This research is, uh, the, research, the researchers of this research is Sayed Abdul Karim from University of Technology Yogyakarta. The focus of the study is analyze the ideology and common sense of assumption in SBA speech. The objective of the, of the research is to discuss the common sense assumption and ideology by means of language use in SBA's political speech, which is, which is mainly grounded in Norman Sperkloff's theory of language and power in critical discourse analysis. The research question of this, this research is the first one is what are the common sense assumption and ideology in social baba Yudhoyono's speech, political speech? And the second one is how do they relate, they relate to each other in the political discourse? The subject of this research is SBA, the data collection technique is qualitative approach and the data analysis technique is critical discourse analysis from the Roman Verkov theory. The findings of this research is the results showed, showed that the common sense assumption and ideology conveyed through SPA specific words or expressions can significantly explain how political discourse is construct, constructed and affected by the SPA's role and position, life experience, and power relations. He used language as a powerful social tool to present his common sense assumption and ideology to convince his audiences and fellow citizens that the future of sustainability has been an important agenda for all people. And the comparison between three journals is the first one in the article one, the hypothesis is implicit, and in the article two and three, the hypothesis is explicit. The second differences 
differences is in the article one the data analyst in the article one and two the data analyst technique is explained and in the article three the data analysis technique is not explained and the third difference in article one the focus of analysis to explore the relationship among language ideology and power in the second article the focus of analysis is to explore the silent language language features of the speech and the main ideologies and strategies used to achieve his long-standing political goals and the third article the focus of analysis is the way how SPA delivers the speech which uses certain words and certain significant expression shows the power experiences and position he uses language to strengthen his ideology about certain things when he delivers the speech and the next presentation is continued by Valen. So the first journal I found uh, entitled The Ideological Embodiment on Nadima Karim's Speech, a Critical Discourse Analysis. The researchers are Ani Mafiro and Sulistriono. Uh, the journal is taken from Indonesian Journal of EFL and Linguistic Volume 5, number one. And it is published in 2020. So the focus of the study is ideological embodiment found on Nadim, Nadim Smakarim's speech on National Teachers Day. Sayur, sayur. There are two objectives, two objectives here. The first is to identify the structure of the speech discourse delivered by Nadim Makarim on National Teachers Day and to uncover the ideological embodiment on Nadim Makarim's speech on National Teachers Day. The research questions are how is the structure of the speech discourse delivered by Nadi Makarim on National Teachers Day and how is the ideological embodiment on Nadi Makarim's speech on National Teachers Day. So the subject of this study is Nadi Makarim's speech delivered in National Teachers Day uh, in held on November 25th, 2019 and the data collection uh, were taken from the YouTube channel of Compass TV, which then is transcribed verbally into written form. However, the researchers also seek out the official transcript of the speech at the official website of Dirto and compare it to the transcription from the YouTube video to ensure the reliability of the data. And after that, the researcher ensures over again the data by rechecking process to make them uh, extremely accurate before interpreting based on the theory adopted. And the data analysis techniques, they are using a uh, descriptive qualitative method to analyze the data that were in the form of lingual units. And uh, the theory of Ten uh, Fandi was employed to uh, in identify the text structure comprising micro, supra, and macro structure. So here are the findings. Uh, the researcher analyzed the structure of the text first, uh, macro, supra, and micro. In macro, it can be seen that Nadim puts an emphasis on a mission declared upon Indonesia's education change, and the team and the topic are implicitly delivered. In supra structure, the researchers point out the organizational aspect in the text, and it shows that the speech discourse arranges the text template as the common one, like consisting of the opening, content, and closing. It implies that the speech discourse is arranged to convey a, ph a phenomena in general, followed by the most specific one afterwards. In superstructure, Nadim used the strategies of uncovering the old curriculum applied during these days that did not contribute any better impact than followed by declaring a mission of a change to build much better education system. And the microsystems concerns on the linguistic as aspects such as semantic, syntactic, and rhetoric. Next. And after that, the researcher tried to seek the ideological embodiment found in each structure of the text. Uh, in the microstructure, the researcher found three things. The first is the word choices, like the like Nadim, Nadim Karim used personal pronouns like anda, kita, etc., which implicitly tells that Nadim made an effort to put himself as equal as the audiences rather than placed himself higher. 
Uh, second is sentences choices. The sentences were in the form of passive as well as active, and also in the form of declarative, informative, and imperative, rather than using figurative forms. Even though metaphorical expression was applied, was applied once in a while. The directive language was chosen to portray the speech straight on point and avoid being avoid being diffusive. And, sec uh, and lastly is the style choices. The language style in the speech applies in the languages of uh, repetition, which lies on the certain words such as anda, guru, and murid. It is used to emphasize uh, the speech that education's main key goes to anda and guru referring to the educators. Uh, second is the ideological embodiment on superstructure of the speech discourse. Uh, in superstructure, the ideology was represented represented in the text organization comprises three parts such as opening content and closing of the text the sequence of ideological in every part of speech discord is not a uh, suddenly ideological practice but it is definitely planned as well and lastly is the ideological embodiment on macro structure the ideology embodied in macro structure by the team raised by Nadima Karim is uh, existing in the team that has a tendency to invite the educators and all parts getting involved in education system and to believe and act what, as what was expected by the speaker. Besides, uh, the sentences mutually linked to another by representing the same theme and topic, therefore the coherence is indicated. Next. So here are my personal comments about the study. So. The data are well prepared and like they go to, through several checking process. However, there are some minor grammatical errors like minor inconsistency between phrases superstructure and superstructure. Like sometimes the researcher uses superstructures uh, while in another page they use suprastructures. Next. So this is the second journal that I found uh, on the internet. The title is The Representation of Palestinian and Israeli Communities in Cameron's Speech a Critical Discourse Analysis. So Cameron is a prime minister of the UK from uh, 20, uh, 2010 to 2016. Uh, the sources is from International Journal of Linguistic Literature and Translation. And the researcher is Amal Kamal al -Farah. It is published in 2020. Next. So the focus of the study of this uh, text is the representation of Palestinian and Israeli communities in the speech of Cameron, the Prime Minister of Britain, to the Neset in 2014. Next. There are two objectives here in the study. First is to discover the representation of Palestinian and Israeli communities in in Cameron's speech, and second is investigate if Cameron's speech is neutral or biased. Next. There are two research questions here. First is how are Palestinian and Israeli communities represented in Cameron's speech, and does his speech contain kind of bias, and if yes, towards which community? So the subject of the study is the speech of Cameron, the Prime Minister of Britain, to the Neset in 2014. Uh, in collecting this data, the researcher chose the full text of David Cameron's speech to the Neset in March 2014. For, the an for analyzing this uh, text, the researcher adopted a very close framework by doing macro-analysis and also micro-analysis, which is done in three di dimensions, text analysis, Processing analysis and social analysis. Next. So here are the findings. First, 
uh, the researcher starts her finding section by analyzing macrostructure and then micro. Uh, in macrostructure, the researcher found that David Cameron supports Israel more than any of his recent co recent conser conservative criticism. His main topic is basically de defeating all the attempts to delegitimize Israel. Uh, it's generally, Cameron came to Nested with a, de with a determination neither to object the leaders of Israel nor to say anything against their attitudes regarding the settlements and peace negotiation. This sport using power against Palestinians, particularly Hamas and its supporters as Iran. He uses open and closed remarks in Hebrew to show his loyalty to Israel. He started Salam Ikulam, which means hi everybody, and ended saying Anachnu Yakharf which means we are with you. Uh, in the microanalysis, it is divided into three parts. First is description. Uh, in the description part, we can find that the use of pronoun we and you. Uh, Cameron uses we pronoun as a uniting remark of him and all the British, showing that he represents them all in having the same needs and goals with, uh, for the Israel. And he uses you pronoun to have a direct engagement with the audience as a whole. Next is logical connectors. He uses logical connectors to show his full support to Israel, but not to Palestinians. And he uses uh, a lot of active sentence. One of the example is when he is talking about their friendship and he is the doer of keeping this support and this strong relationship. For example, he uses active voice to show the Jews' contribution to Britain, like all of survivors have made such an incredible contribution to Britain. By the survivors here, he means the Jew survivors of the Holocaust. It is also found about the modality. Modality is used to convey his personal authority as a prime minister as he wants to stop the Islamist extremists shown in. We must be clear that what we mean by this term, the poisonous ideology of Islamist extremism, extremism and distinguish it from Islam. He also assures his and his country's responsibility towards the security of Israel by standing with the Jews in every step they do, shown in I am here as a good friend and strong supporter of Israel. The researcher also found the use of coordinator to show his support to Israel and his grief for what had happened to the Jews in the Holocaust. He also found about the negative sense of sentence, like he shows his attitude of, of hatred of hatred towards Iran, which he states that Iran supports Hamas with weapons. This indicates that he cares a lot toward the security of Israel. On the other hand, he did not mention the security of Palestine as he finds them criminals and the Jews are the victims. He also uses uh, several types of mood and vocabulary, like using word homeland for the Jews, not the Palestinians. Uh, the second part is interpretation. In the relational level, there is a clear match between Cameron, who has a Jewish ancestry, and, warm, and his warm speech to the Nasset of Israel. However, when he sympathizes the children of Israel and wants them to live peacefully, it appeals to the conservative ideology and values. Finally, as for the subject position, Cameron uses the first personal pronoun, I, which shows his power and authority as a prime minister. He also used pronoun we to show his needs to be united with Israel in order to achieve the economic goals of his country. And lastly is the explanation part. His ideological is determined related to his position as a conservative prime minister. He cares about the public in general since the conservative principles are related to the values of family, patriotism and the criticism of state inferences. He tried to be a sympathetic leader rather than an authoritative one. Next slide. So here are my personal comments about the study. The research is very detailed, especially on the microanalysis part, the textual element. However, the data collection part is a bit unclear and the researcher seems to let her rage in shown in what about Palestinian children and the civilians who were killed brutally and cruelly in the wars of 2008 and 2012 before the speech? 
with two question marks. He even did not mention them. It is probably because the researcher is Palestinian, so that she is angered by the subject of the research. Next slide. So here is the last journal I found on the internet. The title is Critical Analysis of Ganjar Speech of COVID-19, a, a, a Constructed Political Identity. It is uh, taken from the Journal of the Association for Arabic and English, with the researchers are Prayudisti Sinta Pandawangi and Nur Hayati and Zuli Koti. It is published in 2020. Next. The focus of the study is Ganjar Pranowo's political identity constructed through his speech for responding some cases of Ungaran citizens' refusal on accepting a COVID-19 patient's remain body. The objective is to uncover Ganjar's political identity that is constructed through his speech in responding some cases of Ungaran citizens' refusal on accepting a COVID-19 patient's remain body. The research question is how do Kanjar's political identity is constructed through his speech for responding some cases of Ungaran citizens' refusal on accepting a COVID-19 patient's remain body. So the subject of the study is Kanjar Pranowo's speech for responding some cases of Ungaran citizens' refusal on accepting a COVID-19 patient's remain body. The data was collected from Kanjar's private Instagram account and uh, it uses Fairclough CDA as the main framework, but the textual part of the analysis is uh, explained using Halliday SFL, the interpretation with Halliday appraisal system, and explanation part with Van Dyke political discourse analysis. So there are many theory applied in this journal. The findings uh, in the textual, the textual findings on gender speech, there are modes of the sentences, process, and modalities. So the majority of the sentences used by Ganjar are declarative sentences, then imperative, and then exclamative. The material uh, the, about the process, they are there are found about about four processes. The first is material, second is relational, verbal, and lastly mental. About the modalities, Ganjar used proportional of morality such as displaying humanity to express less morally action, adverbs of counter expectancy exceeding such as break a heart to express an, un, uh, an undesirable code of conduct. Also, he uses high degree intensity of, of persuasive concessions such as inserting quotes from MOE or experts in this field to oblige the, the, the society to accept the patient's burial. Second is the interpretation of Kanjar's appraisal. So Kanjar focuses on evaluating two things in appraisal judgment, the attitude of several citizens in Ungaran and the value of the nurse remain in his viewpoint. Um, in appraisal appreciation, Kanjar focuses on, evalu on evaluating three things. They are the refusal phenomenon, the procedure of burial COVID-19 patient and the false information which is currently circulating within the society. And lastly is the critical analysis of Kanjar's speech, uh, a constructed political identity. The act of Kanjar to deliver his speech through his private Instagram account in responding to this phenomenon shows that he wants to uh, to, uh, yeah, to to create a sense of closeness to the citizen was more comfortable to regulate. He intends to establish his political identity in Indonesia by including Islamic terminology such as purification in Shari perspective, sinful action, the MUI institution, and the ulamas to create a degree of closeness that may be attract voter sympathy, the voter sympathy, and or even public trust. Lastly, he maintains the structure of discourse uh, amid the emergence of public distrust towards the government in all levels of authority by saying, do not believe hoaxes that are circulating in public and instead believe the authority. Next. So here are, no, next, next. 
So here are my personal comments about the study. Uh, it is well and thoroughly explained and easy to understand. However, the explanation about the data collection method is a bit unclear and some minor grammatical error. So there are some differences between these journals. Like first, the subject of the first and third journal are relatively new, unlike the second journal, despite of the three having the same year of publication. Second, the first journal uses Van Dyke to identify the text structure like micro, supra, macro, while the second and third journal uses fair clock theory as the main theory. However, in analyzing the subject, the second journal is, is, is doing both micro and micro analysis, while the third journal only focusing on micro analysis with various approach on each element like textual with Halliday's SFL interpretation with Halliday's appraisal theory and explanation with finite political discourse analysis. The second journal has a separate section for both findings and discussion while the other two are not. Uh, lastly, uh, the data collection method in the data collection method part in the first journal are explained in detail while the second and the third are not. I think that's all. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you, everyone. And I think that's all from group four. We are sorry if that's too long. And is there any particularly on how to do CDA on political speech? And um, I believe you guys, uh, everyone here has learned about uh, the details about how to do it, particularly when you are dealing uh, and that the speech are various. I could, I could um, um, see that you were trying to do your best to find uh, different uh, types of data, different approaches, and etc. Here are what I can say uh, in relation of, uh, to your presentation. Okay, let me just share my screen, everyone. Okay, so uh, in the first week, in the previous week, I, I was talking about paper formula. Yeah, am Mulet, that's how you <laughs> write it. Okay, and uh, Mulet was kind of like uh, very detailed in reviewing different types of different uh, methods methods used in CDA. And the purpose of this week's presentation is to learn about how people do CDA from different theoretical background and different um methodological background as i said before earlier in a earlier in a very in our very first meeting of the of, uh, of this semester that cda is multidisciplinary uh, that in the disciplinary and that cda is kind of um uh, in the methodology so that from that uh, you can uh learn that if you're doing CDA, you have to be able to cope with different theories. Um, that's the thing, and uh, that the, the positive thing is that you can always see do CDA, even though you start, your starting point is different. Yeah. Okay, yeah, this is an example of how Moulay do a mapping, a map, um, various uh, Paper for various research that have been done on CTA. Well, of course, Mule didn't cover everything. Didn't cover. Didn't read all papers on CTA. But he 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 was trying to bring in some sample research uh, from which we can see that CTA is kind of like overacting or CTA is. Uh, um, I mean, it's a, it's a broad term we can use when we refer to different theories or methods to analyze the text. So this is an example of how uh, Mule map uh, research on CDA. For example, here a paper by Rorin and Puma, 2008. The discourse or the topic covered there is about perceptions of property. 
and Eman and Frost Swat as rather discourse or the topic or the social issue. When you are talking about discourse, it's about the topic or the facts in social context. Okay, so this is about parenting practices. Parenting practices expressed or manifested in text. Yeah, this is the discourse. Okay. And then the example of text. This is about the data. Okay. The data. All right. Okay. And the topic, the particular but the particular topic being involved here is key passages in fiction literature. Yeah. And then the approach, combination of many. Yeah, he didn't make it either. Now, how we are going to do it in our session, in our uh, in our course? Um, I, I'm, I've made this for you. Uh, one sec. Okay, it should be somewhere here. Okay, yeah. So I will share this in our WhatsApp group to help you to help you organize your presentation. Well, okay. So group one has done his best to do. The presentation so they presented in detail all the papers they read direct okay so they did the num uh, all everything on in details it it's gonna take time yeah it's gonna be time consuming so what you could do um, for the next presenters and the first presenter please revise yours your report following this format yeah that will make it easier to see the mapping ya ini akan memudah anda melihat mapping dari membuat mapping dari paper-paper anda jadi untuk presentasi berikutnya silahkan dibuat kira-kira seperti ini boleh dimodifikasi dan presenter nomor satu hari ini silahkan ditaruh ide-ide yang tadi sudah dipresentasikan dalam tabel seperti ini ini akan mempermudah nah detail papernya nanti ditaruh di referensi di sini So, misalnya number one, and then the paper, papernya tulis sumbernya saja. Kemudian dispose satu topik, eh, teks, uh, teksnya, topik secara khususnya yang social, uh, social issues-nya. Ya, yes. social issues, really, really, Teks gitu ya. Ya. Kemudian data sosnya apa? Apakah itu sosial media ataukah media ataukah speech uh, verbal speech yang di uh, apa uh, di di, um, di di mana begitu ya? Kalau papernya di Jakarta Post, taruh Jakarta Post tahun berapa sampai berapa? Oke, okay. ini saya kasih satu lagi ya. Semoga cukup ininya. Uh, Hmm. Um. Oke, okay. one second. Oke, okay. sesio. Ya, misalnya sosial political konteksnya apa? Misalnya pemilihan presiden seperti tadi ya, tadi ada ya uh, presidential election 2019 misalnya ya presidential election uh, Amerika tahun berapa berapa gitu ya misalnya. Terus objektifnya apa? Ya, uh, uh, one paper usually has two or three objectives. And main theoretical approach, Faclaw, Pendaik, Wodak, atau siapa? Atau SFL kombinasinya banyak pasti, tapi dicantumkan yang main saja. SFL, SFL apa? Transitivity, modality, atau apa? Ya, kemudian methodological approach-nya, make apa di situ? Apakah dia, uh, apa itu, um, pakai mixed method, kuantitatif, kualitatif, ya? Yeah. Oke, okay. tadi data source kan di more than one ya, bisa saja data text, uh, bisa dari paper, eh, bisa dari uh, media, but can be also from interview, interview juga bisa apapun gitu ya. 
the visa uh, uh, ethnographic uh, uh, observation bisa juga oke okay, and then summary of finding summary of findings dibuat point-point saja ya yeah. jadi uh, that will make us uh, 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 apa itu uh, that will make it easier for us to see the mapping of everything we have learned okay and then for that you need to explain three to four sample papers in detail baru gitu ya choose the best ones that you think which use different theoretical method to do this yeah yeah okay, okay then yeah. this is what you can do uh and then after reviewing the papers what can you learn about doing cda on blah 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 yeah whatever you are doing yeah now to do one to three of course you cannot do it alone you need to work together yeah all right so and then this is the note uh you have at least six international journals and six national journals to do so here are the read list of references please put the references here once you're done please share your findings in our whatsapp group so everyone can have some uh record on what we did during the semester yeah and particularly in deciding what to do for the final project Is that clear everyone? Do you have questions? 